Hey guys, it's Derry and welcome back to High Street Youth Online. Uh, it's episode two, Pastor Tom is bringing the word tonight with three little pigs, go check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to the next episode in our series called Reality Check. Are you living a fairy tale life? Last week we heard from our new youth resident, Daniel Stobbs, and he talked to us about Humpty Dumpty. And if you wanna know more, you'll have to go back and watch that video. Today, we're going to look at the story of the three little pigs. And most of you probably have heard the story of the three little pigs. But before we get there, I have to tell you about this fort that I built when I was a kid. When I was about 13 or 14 years old, back on the, the backside of my parents' property, I built this really cool fort. My best friend and I set up a fort on a rock that was about this big around and about that high. And we used eight inch railroad spikes and it was leaning up against a tree. And that fort lasted so long that when I got married about eight years later, my dad called me one day and said, hey Tommy, you need to come and take this fort down. He said, because it's never gonna come down if you don't take it down. And I loved that fort, it was a lot of fun. But the only reason that fort stayed was because it had a really good foundation. So back to our story. The three little pigs. If you don't know the story, I'm gonna run you through it really fast. So there's three little pigs and they each had a house. And the reason they had a house was because they were afraid of the big bad wolf. And the first pig built his house out of straw because he didn't want to take a lot of time. So along comes the big bad wolf and he does what he did and that is I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And of course we know that he blew the house down. And so the straw house pig runs off and finds his friend who built a house out of wood. And he goes inside and they huddle and they're afraid and they are, what's gonna happen? And along comes the big bad wolf and he repeats the process. And of course he blows that house down as well. Then they both go find their friend who has been taking forever to build his house, but has finished it. And it took him so long because he built the house out of brick. And they go knock on the door and he goes, yes. And they say, can we come inside? The big bad wolf is coming. And he comes and he threatens and he says, I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow your house down. And of course, we know that he blows and whoosh, nothing happens because the house was made of brick. And brick does not blow down easily in windstorms, especially big windstorms, for which we are all thankful. So what in the world does that have to do with anything in your Bible or with scripture? Well, I'm here to tell you today that this story actually has its foundation in scripture. And you may go, well, wait a second, I've never read about the three little pigs in my Bible. That's because it's not quite the three little pigs, but it does talk about building a house and on what kind of foundation and what kind of materials you use to build that house. So if you're following along with me in your Bible, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter three, and this is Paul speaking. Paul is writing to the church at Corinth they have a lot of problems, and one of them is the way they are living their lives, how they are behaving every day, and he just wants to remind them of the importance of their daily actions. So beginning in verse 10 of 1 Corinthians 3, he says this, By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is. So there it is. He points out that we each are building, and as believers, those who follow what scripture says, those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God, our foundation is Jesus. And on that foundation, we're either building with wood, hay, and stubble or straw, or we're building with gold, silver, and precious stones. And we all know that one of those is more valuable than the other. And when it comes to how we live our lives, we build all of the time with our words, with our actions, with our deeds. Every day we're building. And if you keep looking in this text, there will come a day when we are judged for how we have built our house. This is what it says. Their work will be shown for what it is because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. 
So every one of us is building a house. Every single person, you included, even as a young person, as an 11 or 12 year old, as a 17 year old, you are building a house. And the most important thing about your house is its foundation. When I was 18, I spent a summer working, pouring and putting foundations in. And I can tell you, it's not an exciting job, it's hard work. And when the job is done, nobody can see what you did if you did it right. But when the rain comes, when storms come, if you've poured a foundation and put it on solid ground, your house will be okay. And Jesus actually talks about this, and Paul is referencing what Jesus has to say. Over in Matthew 7, Jesus says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the, steam, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. Jesus points out that what we build on for a foundation is of utmost importance. And we either build our house on a rock or sand and dirt. And when the storms of life come, if we have a foundation on the rock, we will be okay. And Paul is teaching us in 1 Corinthians 3 that Jesus is that rock. But as those who follow him, we are building something. And sometimes we build using wood or hay or stubble. We're like those first two pigs. We build stuff and it's not always useful. It's not always beneficial. We, maybe we spend all of our time playing on Instagram and TikTok and phone games and computer games and consoles and all of the different ways that we can be distracted for hours on end. Maybe you don't get enough sleep at night because you're always playing games and then you sleep during the day and your parents are upset with you and things don't go well in your house. Maybe that's not your problem, but maybe you're gossiping. Maybe you're telling stories about your friends that aren't true because you're trying to make yourself look better. Maybe you disrespect your parents. Maybe you disrespect your friends. Maybe you don't like your teachers and you cause problems for them in school. Whatever it is, this is selfish living and it's always looking for yourself. It's thinking of yourself more than anything else. But it doesn't have to be that way. And some of us are building with gold, silver, and precious stones. We have thankful hearts. We're learning to serve others. We go last instead of going first when it's time to eat. And that sounds silly, but it tells you where your heart is. We obey the instructions of Jesus to love others and to serve them well. And we always are thinking more of others than ourselves. Now, most of us are building with both of those materials at the same time. You have some rooms and they're good. Like if the fire came, you'd say, oh man, my, that room is gonna be okay. But the problem is maybe you have a room at the back of the house and you don't ever really let anybody else go there. You don't want anybody to know that room exists. You sure don't acknowledge it to Jesus even though he sees everything in your life. And when your friends come over, you make sure you don't let them see that room and your parents don't know that room exists. And maybe you think nobody knows that room exists. And that room could look like anything from pictures you watch and look at and video that isn't right. Or maybe it's sending pictures and video that you shouldn't be of yourself or somebody else. Maybe it's nursing thoughts about yourself that aren't true, causing yourself harm in some way that is not good for you. Maybe it's the way you treat others. Maybe you're a bully and you're unkind all the time and you're, un you're covering what is really a problem for you and your heart. Whatever it may be, you're wasting your time instead of investing it wisely. And when the fire comes, all of that will be burned up. So maybe in your life, it's time for a remodel. Maybe you need to start building out of gold and silver and precious stones. And if you have a room or two in your house or a closet that you hide, it's time to clear that out so that you can build well. Because while in our story of the three little pigs, 
at the end, it's always the big bad wolf that's coming. The end of our lives looks different. It's not Satan, our enemy, who's going to attack us. It's actually Jesus who is going to be the judge. And here is what matters most for each of us. What is your foundation? If your foundation is Jesus, then your life has a good start, but you must live well and be obedient. But if you're watching this today and your foundation is not Jesus, when the storm of life comes, you will struggle because you have no hope, because you don't have Jesus. And Jesus is very clear that he is the one who comes to rescue us. He lived the perfect life. He came and died on a cross for your sin and mine, because I'm just as broken as you are. I have just as much capacity to build rooms out of wood, hay, and stubble as you do. But Jesus said, I can make that be okay. So if today you're watching this and you say, I don't have Jesus in my life, then you need to call on him as Lord and Savior. For those of you who do have Jesus in your life, and those of you who call on his name today, we are building on the foundation of Jesus. And one day, when the end comes, we will be judged for everything we have done. And the same person who judges us is the one who offers us the rescue that we so badly need. But the fire that he brings is a fire of purification and so all of the bad stuff that you did is burnt away. And if you trusted Jesus as Savior and then you spend your life serving yourself, it's very clear. Paul talks about this at the end of the passage. He says, If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. And that text there says the day, that means the day of judgment. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though only as one escaping through the flames. Jesus is the one who rescues us. And in Acts, Peter is actually giving the message of hope that we see to these men who are Gentiles, they're not Jews. They're people who had never heard of God or they barely heard of him. And this is what Peter says to them. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The same one who judges is the same one who rescues. So today, I want you to think about the story of the three little pigs. And it's a silly story. It's a funny story. It's a fun story. And we like to laugh. But the truth is, you need to build your life on the foundation of Jesus. And your work should be in obedience to everything that he calls you to do. You should be building with gold and silver and precious stones, not with wood, hay, and stubble. And if you don't know Jesus today, call on his name. He wants to rescue you so that you can live a life for Him and survive the fire of judgment. It was cool to hear from Pastor Tom. What an awesome message it was uh, about the different foundations and how it looks different when Christ is at the center of it. If you guys aren't already following us on Instagram and TikTok, do yourself a favor and go do that. Thanks for joining us on episode two. Thank you.